Good morning, everyone. Uh, you all can hear me? Uh, if you can hear me, please let, uh, just type in the chat. Um, just a simple yes. So welcome to another webinar session brought to you by Talent Bank. My name is Hanis and I'll be your host and moderator for this session today. But before I begin, I would like to say thank you very much to everyone here this morning. Yeah. I hope that everyone is doing well and staying safe. It's a wonderful morning for a webinar session. I know that some of you prefer to be out and about, but uh, if you do, please uh, practice all the SOP and maintain social distancing at all times. Um, our frontliners have been doing an amazing job, uh, So, but it is up to us to maintain the vigilant, okay? because kita jaga kita, right? So join with us this morning is Alicia, uh, Director of Central Strategic Economic Region from TM, who will be sharing with us her topic, um, Communication Skills for Workplace Success. So welcome, Alicia. But first up, uh, a few logistics for our session. Um, you can use the Zoom Q&A function to share any questions you have during the session. Um, select at the end, we'll earn a special token, uh, but only for those that are residing in Malaysia. Yeah? Uh, for those who are overseas or not currently in Malaysia, I'm afraid that the, the special token uh, won't be uh, eligible for you guys. So you can also use the Zoom chat function to share any comments you have during the session, and as well that, the, uh, that this session will be recorded for future playback. So later on in the session, we'll be giving up a free personality profile assessment courtesy of TM. So if you miss it up in the earlier session by TM, do stay tuned. And furthermore, stand a ch chance to win some fabulous prizes as you vote in our, our Graduate's Choice Award. Uh, show your support to Telecom Malaysia by voting them as your choice of employer. You can vote by scanning in the QR code in the screen or by visiting at the link below at the bottom. So do give your support by voting TM in the government link category as well as the telecommunication category. Okay, and um, by sharing your by sharing by sharing the vote with your friends, you can win amazing prizes along with it. So an introduction of our speaker today, a marketing and communications professional with over 20 years experience in the telecommunications and IT industry. Alicia is currently serving as general business driver TM. Her career at TM spans over 14 years, having taken on roles in corporate communications, brand, marketing, strategic events, and now HR. But prior to TM, Alicia was attached to Oracle Corporation as the Corporation Communication. One sec, yeah. Yeah, Corporate Communication Lead for the Asian region. It was in the role that she had extensive exposure to managing communications across different cultures and norms. She also worked closely with her counterparts of this IT software giant based in San Francisco, US, and learned many best practices in managing communications across cultures and boundaries. So without further ado, I would like to once again welcome everyone today. And before, we, before I pass the floor to Alicia, let's all watch this video. Together, we found new ways to live, to play, to learn, to work. Together, let's rebuild better livelihoods, better opportunities a better society
Society. A better economy. Towards a digital Malaysia. Together, kita jaga kita. Our children. Our communities. Malaysia. Together, making life and business easier for a better Malaysia. Okay, so without further ado, I will pass the floor to Alicia. Alicia, are you here? Good morning, everyone. Can everybody hear me okay? Hi, Alicia. I can hear you. Okay, good morning. Let me just uh, take over the screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There we go. Let me just... Okay, can you see my screen okay? All good. Okay, well, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I think Hanis has already done a very uh, fairly comprehensive uh, ex uh, introduction to me. <laughs> but um, just to start off this morning, um, I understand most of you are students, am I right? So I'm going to present on a topic that probably is quite familiar with some of you, or maybe some of you have already uh, learned about it. But um, this is just uh, something I put together in terms of uh, based on my experience so far. So I'm open to feedback to you know hear from you after this uh, presentation, whether it's questions or even feedback on what you think of the presentation. Okay, so let's just start off. Um, I wanted to start off by talking a little bit about me and um, <laughs> Besides what Hani said, a little bit more, maybe a bit more personalized information. So that kind of helps to uh, give you a, a bit of a closer view or a closer perspective of who I am and why this topic uh, is, has been given to me uh, to talk about today. So as you know, I've been in um, TM for about 14 years now and uh, I've not been doing the same job. I've done many, many things, um, as uh, Hanis has mentioned, from corporate comms to internal comms to marketing, brand. And while I was there, I also had the opportunity to um, work in our subsidiaries, um, uh, MMU, Multimedia University. I'm not sure if there are any MMU students here. Um, so I was there also doing marketing and corporate comms. And then I also had a chance to work at uh, WeB, which was the mobile arm for TM when we first started. So it was also a very interesting experience there where we were starting something new and it was a totally uh, different environment and had a very interesting uh, culture of young people, et cetera. Okay, and then moving on. Um, yeah, so my background is um, I've been in Oracle and Novell, both IT giants. And then I've also been, work, I've also worked in um, uh, corporate comms uh, at agencies uh, as well uh, in my earlier days. So um, uh, let me just, uh, okay. Yeah, so I've also worked in, uh, agencies in my earlier days. So that also kind of um, 
kind of formed some of my uh, background in communications. So I was in um, a PR agency and an advertising agency. So that's why when um, it was uh, when the team when I was the team was asked. Uh, to come up to think of a topic that I should talk about. They said, because of my experience in comms, that's um, why this topic was given to me. So, okay, so enough of the not so int bo the boring work stuff. And then maybe now let's talk about the pictures that I have in front of you. So, um, interestingly enough, uh, I have two uh, icons on the right hand side, uh, bottom right which is of my son, and that's someone that keeps me busy all the time. He turns 12 uh, this uh, next month. And I have, a, I have a pet dog as well, a little Rottweiler that's also uh, quite a handful. And the two of them are keeping me busy and keeps me very grounded and uh, being uh, 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 having them and learning from them as well. So the other pictures that I put up, actually one, if you see, is the Jungle Trail. Um, Actually, that's what I call my happy place. And the reason for that is because, you know, with everything that's going on, when, when I go for my walks or my hikes in the, you know, luckily for me, I have a little jungle trail not far from where I live. So I can go there two or three times a week. And during this time, I think it's quite important for us to actually have that personal, that one thing that you want to do to keep yourself, you know, uh, happy. And I, I like to say sane, because even now with all the things that's going on um, with COVID and all the restrictions we have and, and the way we do things that are changing, I think it's important for us to, to know what keeps us happy and, uh, you know, have that space where we call our own. Okay, and I, I actually love the beaches, so I've shown uh, pictures of the beaches that I've been to. Um, and lucky enough, these were the two beaches I was lucky enough to go to last year um, before all the traveling was uh, restrictions were put up. And the first one is uh, uh, the beach of Maldives, and the second one is actually uh, Komodo Island, which we managed to go to. So these are some of the things that uh, make up kind of, you know, things that make me happy and things that keep me sane. So just to give you a little bit of background of uh, where I'm coming from. Okay. Uh, let me see, the slide's not moving. Uh, okay. Okay. So this is um, just a rough, uh, this is the outline of what I'm gonna talk about today, um, what communications is. Uh, some of the essential skills uh, and then some principles of communications and what are some of the barriers to effective communication, yeah? And of course, we'll have a Q&A session at the end, okay? Okay, so what is communication? And, and this slide, I, when, I, when I was putting this uh, deck together, I just wanted to, you know, summarize what a communication is. And this slide actually puts uh, it quite well together. And uh, some of the key things that keep coming out is um, uh, communication is about relaying messages, sharing information. Um, it's actually simply about conversations, uh, people, you know, connections. And, and it's, it's, what's quite interesting is, you know, it's something we do every day, but, you know, how good we are actually takes a bit of a time to uh, improve on it and uh, to get better at it. You know, even today, even though I've done a lot of communication work in uh, my working experience, um, I think it's something you keep learning and getting better at. And the challenges of communications are definitely varied uh, depending on how or who you communicate to. So, you know, this is, a, I would say it's a really an ongoing process and you can get better with time and practice. So we'll talk a little bit more about it as we go along, yeah. So why is uh, communication, in fact, communication skill is one of the most uh, highlighted or it's put as one of the key skills that, you know, employers look for in uh, when they are hiring uh, new staff. Uh, they are looking for these characteristics and one of it always comes out as uh, communication. And I wanted to talk a little bit about why is uh, communication uh, important and basically the power of communication um, uh, as I've uh, put up here 
I think we all know that communication is um, what it can do in terms of relationship. It can actually build a relationship and vice versa. It can also break a relationship by the things you say. And, and, and this, I'm not only talking about relationships at work, but even uh, relationships within families or friends, or even if you're dating, right? I mean, things you say and all can make or break uh, a relationship. So that's how powerful uh, it is, uh, the, the words you use, etc., and how you say it, the way you say it, which we'll talk a little bit more about today. Then the next thing about communication is the value it brings. We don't know whether we realize it or not, but the amount of uh, information or knowledge uh, that we gain just from communication, whether it's learning from each other, learning from attending meetings, learning from conferences or even webinars like this, there's a lot of a value to what communication brings to you in terms of learning as well. And of course, you know, the marketers and the brand, uh, the salespeople use communications to win, to get customers. And that is, you know, how powerful it is as a tool today. You can convince someone to uh, buy your product or not buy your product, you know, and from what you say, uh, what you share about the product. And of course, um, from uh, being a customer, we also use uh, many aspects of communication to derive loyalty. And whether it's the uh, loyalty in terms of brand or products, even loyalty among friends, yeah? Uh, communication has the power to do that. And of course, you know, um, a lot of uh, successful people we know uh, tend to speak very well or very eloquent um, and and how they bring about success, you know, in fact, a lot of politicians, we know, they, they speak very well to win over the, the voters and also, you know, the communication as a tool is a very powerful uh, skill to have because of what it can do. And these are just some of the, you know, uh, uh, aspects of what communication can do. I mean, there are obviously a lot more than this, but I mean, this is a starting point of some of the key things that communication can do. Okay, so how do we communicate? So, of course, firsthand you think it's face-to-face, -face, where it's conversations, but there are also many ways that we communicate. Uh, uh, phone calls today or video calls, as you, as you are more familiar with today. And even meetings, whether it's meetings at work, group meetings, etc. Uh, presentations like this, which is more formal. And then the written communication like memos, emails, and I'm not sure if uh, many of you are still familiar with how to use a fax machine, but it was really how we used to transmit information uh, formally, you know, from company to company. Um, publications, whether uh, internally, um, there are different types of publications. I mean, it used to be a lot more printed and today, obviously, it's all digital. Uh, bulletin boards, um, whether it's physical and then before and today it is more online. And then, of course, audio tapes and all. So these were some of the tradi more traditional way of uh, communicating and hotlines, you know, uh, numbers we used to call the 1-800 uh, numbers, etc. Yeah, so these were some of the ways that we communicated uh, for the longest time. And I think what's interesting about it is how it's changed today. And probably this is more... Um, something that you uh, as students today and the millennials and all are more familiar with. Today, the way we communicate has changed a little bit more. And we have the messaging tools like uh, WhatsApp, Telegram, Skype, all the different instant messenger tools, etc. And um, uh, interesting uh, story to tell. Um, I remember it was about maybe like um, a couple of years ago, at least uh, about three, four years ago. And I had, a, I had a new boss at that time. And he actually introduced Telegram to me. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it. And this is about at least three years ago. Three years ago, yeah, three, four years ago. And he said that he wanted all his team to be using uh, Telegram as a messaging app. And at that time, it was fairly new to to me and to some of us, but um, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was used as a formal way of communicating with for him and he wanted it to be with his team. 
and it was a Telegram uh, app that we used. And actually, the Telegram app has a lot of interesting um, uh, features that we never knew of, maybe because we were already so familiar with WhatsApp. But, you know, in, I mean, the Telegram app has a function that's called Secret Chat, and it can do mass broadcast messages to really bigger groups of people. And it was a more secure channel at that time. So that's how we were introduced to um, and Telegram. I was introduced to Telegram at that point, which was um, yeah, something new. And today, of course, you know, how we communicate through social media. I mean, we share with the world, not just our friends, we share with the world. Uh, interest to us uh, we try, it's all on social media and then moving on today obviously uh, video sharing I'm sure uh, all of you are more familiar with all the different uh, video chat video sharing uh, apps they are like the YouTubes and the TikToks etc and um, finally the the method that a lot of us are using more and more today as we work from home and or work from anywhere for that matter all the different tools that we have for video conferencing like uh, Webex, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and even Skype for business, etc. It's all considered a, a very common uh, tool to be used today. So, you know, I, I'd like to hear from you, you know, which do you all think is the most popular or the most used uh, uh, tool or communication channel or method that you use? Um, among um, you, I mean, that'd be interesting to know. Uh, maybe you could just drop us a note and share with us what is the most interesting uh, tool um, or the most popular tool that you use or the one that resonates most with you. So maybe one of the these, yeah, share it with us and then it'd be interesting to see, okay? Okay, so I just wanted to share some interesting facts about communication, yeah? Um, believe it or not, 55% of a message is conveyed non-verbally, which means that your non-verbal cues, how you look, the way you smile, etc., or whether you have eye contact or not, that's how important it is because 55% of a message is conveyed non-verbally. And out of that non-verbal communication that you, you display or do, 55% of it is actually your facial expression. That means how you look and how you respond uh, to people. And Believe it or not, 93% of our daily communication is actually non-verbal. Um, I will talk a little bit more about this later on, but actually, if you, you think about it, um, the expression of your face, uh, if a person is uh, standing in front of you in a presentation in a hall, I think you know, how the person walks and stands actually depicts a lot, uh, sends out a lot of different messages. So even when you talk to someone, 93% of our daily comms is non-verbal. And um, uh, the other fact that's maybe not so uh, unknown to you that the females have much better visual and auditory skills than males. Uh, not, I'm not just saying this because I'm a female, but I do agree that females are a little bit more sensitive to this uh, visually uh, as well. And I have a, a little slide, the next slide that uh, basically summarizes it up quite well. When a girls uh, 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 look at each other and all the messages and all the cues that they, they pick up just from looking at someone, compared to the guys. Um, I'll leave it to you to say whether it's true or not, but you know, this is uh, something that I think women or females are a little bit more sensitive to, and they, they check each other out a lot more than guys from the slide that I'm showing you now. But it's, it's not a good or bad thing, it's just the makeup of males and females, okay? Okay. Um, so basically, what is effective communication? Effective means um, you are successful in getting the result that you wanted. And communication is about exchanging information or news or opinion or views. 
And when you talk about effective com communication, it's basically when you achieve the outcome you have by sharing information or opinion or news. Yeah. So it's very simple, but um, getting for it to be effective, um, I think that's where the, the challenge is. And because there's so many uh, ways to uh, convey a message, and we will talk about some of those uh, uh, communication skills that we need to have to make sure that the message is effective. Yeah. So uh, we're just going to run a little quick poll. I mean, based on what I've said so far, maybe just um, I wanted to hear from you guys. What do you think is the most important communication skill? Um, I will go through some of these a little bit later in the presentation, but just to see, you know, what your viewpoint is on this matter. So maybe just take a few minutes to uh, share with us just, you know, on this. Then let's see what the response is. And then that will also help me frame what I'm going to discuss after this, because then I'll know, you know, what's important to you guys. Okay. All right, we'll take about one minute for everyone to put in their question, uh, answers. Okay, let's see the results. Oh, interesting. Okay. So listening, oh, confidence and listening is the main ones that we see today. Okay, okay. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And actually listening is, um, yeah, something very close to my heart because I think it's something that uh, all of us can get better at doing. So yeah, okay. So we'll just continue from here. from you, um, what you guys think is important. So the, actually the first uh, one I want to talk about is command of the language, right? So for us, I mean, English is our main uh, medium of uh, main uh, most common uh, language. And I mean, there are other languages as well. I mean, like the command of BM is important as well. And if you have other, obviously other uh, languages, you know, it will obviously be an advantage, right? So I was, um, I was, uh, I did my degree at uh, USM. Um, so at that time when we were uh, studying at USM, uh, most of uh, the subjects that we learned, we had to write and uh, learn in BM. So because of that, by default, you know, I had to really put my BM into practice. And um, uh, I think I, today I still have a fairly good uh, command of it, but I think it is important, especially today when English language, the way uh, sometimes people say, is, oh, as long as you get the message across, correct. But I think in terms of uh, grammar or how you, um, uh, you know, present your ideas uh, with the correct, uh, showing a strong command of the language is actually equally important. Um, um, having a command of other languages is an advantage. And I have a story to tell. I'm not sure if we have time, but maybe we'll just uh, talk about it. So there are many ways you can improve your language. Um, of course, the most boring one I can tell you is reading, which, you know, whether it's on the internet or you're reading books and all that. But I think one way to improve the command of the language is to speak. Um, yeah, so here's a little story I had. When I was in a university, in a, I was in Penang at that time, and I'm a local girl, so I come from KL, right? So I speak Cantonese. And when you go up to Penang, most of them speak Mandarin or Hokkien, which I obviously do not 
have a very strong grasp of it. So I knew very basic Mandarin and all that. And I had a roommate and she was uh, uh, from Penang. So she spoke only Mandarin and Hokkien. So you can imagine like we're in a room together and I have to interact with her. And she only speaks uh, Mandarin and Hokkien as her preferred uh, Chinese uh, language, so-called. And I spoke Cantonese. And she was not very comfortable speaking in English. So at that point, we made a truce, you know. We said that I would try very hard to speak to her in Mandarin. And she would, in, in return, speak to me in English. And we would help each other get better at it. And honestly, I was with her. I was staying with her for a good two years. And today, I am a, little, I'm, I'm a lot more confident speaking in Mandarin because as we spoke to each other, we would correct each other. And that's how we learn. And sometimes people are a bit shy, but I don't think you should be. Because if you want to get better at something, and if there are friends or people around you who are willing to help, it, it, you should take advantage of it. And that's how I actually, you know, got my grabs of Mandarin. I really, you know, just from speaking. I mean, I can't read. I can write a little, but I can't read. But, you know, speaking, I have a lot more confidence because of the two years I had with my roommate. So basically, for those of you who um, have maybe a little bit lack of confidence in terms of the lack command of the language, be it BM or English or any other languages you want to learn, the best way to get better is to practice. And even today, I think with my team, I think some of them are on the call today. Um, when they speak to me in English, if they do make a mistake, I do make an effort to correct them because then they learn and they get better at it and they won't make the same mistake. I think that's something uh, a lot of us are a little bit shy of correcting other people and also um, maybe giving feedback if someone doesn't say something correctly or if there's a better way to say it. So I think that's something we all can do better. And if you want to get better in the language, I think that's the best way to learn. Okay. So one command of the language, it's good if you have a good command of it. Uh, if not, you can get better at it by, you know, uh, learning from each other. Uh, and also, you know, um, if you have uh, someone uh, who is not as good as you, you can also give feedback to them because that also helps you as well. So it works two ways, yeah. And then the other um, communication skill besides language, the second one I wanted to talk about is the communication style or medium. I think today that has evolved a lot from what it used to be. Um, those days it used to be very um, uh, clear cut that it was written or um, or you spoke, you know, you com uh, uh, communicated by talking. But today there are so many other mediums um, that we can use whether it's video formats, you know, in fact, more and more job interviews, uh, you know, you have to submit a video interview, uh, a video clip of yourself. Uh, and most of it, a lot of interviews today, in fact, we've been conducting a few in job interviews, they're online, you know, so it's quite hard to see the person in totality. Uh, the different mediums are being used. But I think the main point about communication is choosing the right medium for the right occasion. Yeah. Um, of course, with MTO, I mean, some of the interviews we cannot do face to face, so we have to do it on video. But even the format or the medium that you choose, um, the style has to follow the format. Of course, if it's a for an email to your boss, the way you write it and all has to be done in a proper way. Um, even in your with your peers, it has to be done in a professional manner. Um, yeah. So I think choosing the the right medium and adapting the style to that medium is uh, important. Uh, if you get it right, and then that will help you convey your message uh, better. Okay, I think the third one we want to, I wanted to talk about was about the active listening skills. Um, and most of you have said that that is a very uh, essential uh, a skill. And let's have a look at some of the things that, okay. So what, what are some of the active listening skills, you know? Um, it actually helps us to understand what people are saying in conversations and meetings. And these are some of the active listening skills there are. So why is it important? So one, you want to uh, build trust and establish rapport. Um, and I can give you um, some of the examples uh, of uh, some of the things you can say in terms of that. So for example, uh, when you want to, uh, when you're talking to someone and you feel that 
uh, there's a concern, uh, they have some sort of concern or worry. I mean, it can be so simple as to say, like, you know, uh, start the conversation by saying, hey, is there something that's of concern to you? And tell me about it. So when you say these kind of sentences, it means you are willing to listen to the person. And of course, it comes to the next one, is talks about demonstrating concern. I mean, uh, statements that you can use to, um, uh, well, to showcase this is things like, you know, I know things are tough, but tell me, you know, uh, how I can help you to go through. And of course, by asking specific questions, then you will, you know, get people to uh, tell you what is the uh, situation they're going through, etc. And then also, uh, when you are talking to someone, it's always good to show uh, whether it's verbal affirmations or even uh, uh, physical ones like you nodding your head and eye contact, it's important so that the person knows that you are listening and attentive. And I think one of the, well, it's not really a challenge, but one of the um, uh, hindrance that we have, I think, is that uh, many times we are so busy wanting to talk and give our opinions, which is not a bad thing, but sometimes we actually get more if we actually just take time to really listen to someone and, and that's a skill that, you know, we have to uh, develop as we go along. I think, uh, especially in meetings, you know, I've had, I've had a very uh, young, uh, active and, you know, very proactive uh, staff in meetings. And I still remember many times when I'm trying to tell them or explain something, I give a task. And, and, and before I even finish explaining, you know, I see the hands all go up, you know, they're all so eager to ask questions, uh, and you know, say a uh, give a viewpoint. It's not a bad thing, but sometimes it helps also to finish listening, to actually listen until the speaker has finished saying what they want to say, then ask your questions. I think that way it's even more effective. And, and you get the whole list. Because sometimes when you interrupt someone who's talking, you tend to um, the speaker tends to lose the train of thought. And uh, then sometimes the entire message does not get conveyed as well. So these are some of the active listening skills that you can have. Uh, and these are some of the behaviors, yeah, um, that when we talk about active uh, listening skills. For starters, don't overtalk, which I hope I'm not doing, but uh, be empathetic. That's something I want to talk about later on as well. Uh, making eye contact, that's also very important when you're talking to, to someone to look the person in the eye. And sometimes it can get a bit uncomfortable, but actually it shows that you are listening and paying attention, yeah. And then, like I said, affirmative uh, act actions that you can take. It's uh, nodding your head or, you know, your facial expression, whether it's a smile to say you understand uh, the speaker. Asking questions, yeah. So, like I said, you know, asking questions, definitely you should do to show that you want to know more about the subject. But I think it's more about asking it at the right time. Let the speaker finish speaking, then ask the questions. And then um, the next one is... Avoid distracting actions or gestures. Okay, some people tend to, um, you know, like I said, whether they are waving their hand or uh, some so uh, uh, snapping their, or shaking their legs or you know whatever it is during a conversation, but they can be quite distracting. Yeah. So these are some of the things that you know you shouldn't do uh, to show that you are listening. Uh, paraphrasing. Uh, I think you all understand what paraphrasing is. You're kind of making a summary or uh, uh, paraphrase what was said by the speaker that actually shows that you do understand and you've kind of worded it in a different way, but you do understand the meaning that was the speaker wanted to convey. So that actually shows that you are, you were listening attentively to what was being said. And of course, you know, one I already mentioned is avoid interrupting the speaker. Like I, may, I think, we tend to get excited when we have a thought and we want to quickly share it. So I think one of the things to do is, you know, let the speaker finish making his point and then, you know, ask the questions. Yeah. So these are just some uh, um, behaviors or for active uh, listening. And actually, if you, um, like for, for me personally, when I'm in a meeting, you can get distracted by so many things today. Um, whether it's your phone or, you know, your, someone sitting behind you doing something that, you know, it, it helps you, it, you lose your train of thought. 
And it actually makes a difference when you actually, you know, focus on what's being said. And I think it's a skill you build over time as well. Um, but definitely there's a lot of benefits to it, yeah. Uh, especially when you are working in the environment where someone may ask you for feedback on a certain subject. And if you did not get the all the details or the full picture, it could be a challenge, you know, answering. <clears throat> So I'm really glad to hear that, you know, you have mentioned listening as one of the key skills of communication, yeah. Okay, the next subject that, you know, that you, all, you said that was very important as well was confidence and poise. Um, so how do you get confidence? Okay, for starters, you need to know the subject matter. So if you're going for a job interview, you need to know what are the things you want to highlight about yourself. Uh, if you are doing a presentation for your classes or for a certain subject, you must know the subject matter well. And, and it will come across when you speak, yeah? Um, so the first thing is you need to know your subject matter well. And maybe a little bit more in terms of, um, if you want to dwell a little, okay, outside of the subject, other things that you can focus on to build your confidence is, you know, focus on your strength. If your strength is um, speaking clearly or having a very strong vocal voice to project your voice, you know, focus on things like that, they are your strength. Um, other things are like, uh, yeah, I mean, for women especially, I think, if you dress well or you dress with confidence, they say, that also helps with confidence. But I mean, a few other tips is things like, you know, have good posture. If you're standing in front of an audience and presenting, have good posture. All this will help build your confidence. And it, it, it's not going to happen overnight, but all these little things will help you. And depending on how you are or how the kind of personality you are, uh, when you are presenting or communicating, have fun, you know what I mean? I mean, even today, I mean, this is, okay, in all honesty, this is my first webinar. But I mean, I presented many, many occasions, but this is the first webinar I've had. So I'm a little bit nervous because I have to, you know, control all the, the technology things and all that. But you know what? I think it's okay to be nervous. Uh, but you must know what is the message you want to convey and you must believe in that message that you want to share or the information that you want to share, and all this will actually add on to um, your confidence, yeah? Okay, the fifth one I wanted to talk about was non-verbal cues, and, and this is something I have to keep reminding myself. So, um, that's the communications model that says that words make up 7% um, of the communications that you, you share. So, it don't matter what I say, it's more about uh, that's only seven percent so to me that's verbal words and then 38 percent is the tone of your voice which is your vocal aspect so it's the three v's actually it's verbal vocal and 55 percent which i talked about earlier is um visual so it is um what uh what you do is louder than what you say end of the day, right? So this is basically what it means. And, and I, have a, I have a little story to tell you. And yeah, this is a story about uh, my son. I remembered when I went to his first, um, I, he was in kindergarten and I, we had to go to his, um, like a parent thing. And I, I remember, um, you know, saying a lot of good things about my son and, you know, he was very responsive and all that. And, and suddenly the teacher tells me, you know, uh, you know, there's one thing about your son that, you know, despite all the good things, uh, when we tell him to not do something that he's doing or like not scold him, but tell him not to do something that he was doing, the first thing he would do is roll his eyes. I think, you know, and this is like a four-year-old and the teacher is telling me that four-year-old is rolling his eyes when the teacher stops him from doing something. And that's when I realized that, you know, even at that age, we actually give out a lot of non-verbal cues, whether we realize it or not. And if a four-year-old can do that, what more you and me as adults, you know, the kind of uh, non-verbal signals we send out, whether we realize it or not, 
if we realize it, that's good because if you really want to roll your eyes at someone who's saying something that you do not agree with, that's fine. But if you do it and you don't realize, I think that you know may have uh, disastrous consequences. And, and and all honestly, you know, I think my son takes the rolling eyes from me because I tend to do it too. When I don't like something or I disagree with something, I, I tend to do that, but I'm a little bit more conscious of it these days on what, how or where I do it. If it's like in a management meeting, I will definitely seriously try not to roll my eyes even though I disagree with something. Um, but in more informal set, in more informal settings with friends, yes, maybe I do, you know, but that's how powerful the non-verbal uh, signals are whether you realize it or not and in simple things like eye contact you know when you look at someone who's talking to you or um, your hand gestures and even distracting things like um, you're playing with your phone you know it's non-verbal it basically says you're disinterested in the subject matter right so all that you know it gives out a lot of communicates a lot more than you think you are okay um Okay, so vocal as well, the tone of your voice. So when you talk, whether you're happy or sad, it comes across in the tone of your voice. And if you're nervous or not, it also will come across. So, you know, um, that is actually one uh, aspect because it's such a, there's such a heavy weightage on that. It's a good way to control that as well. Um, yeah, and um, project the kind of uh, the tone appropriate for the occasion, yeah. Okay, let me just go back. Okay, yeah. So yeah, that brings me to the, the next topic when I talk about the volume and clarity. So in, in general, I tend to talk very fast. Uh, I tend to sometimes rattle on a little bit depending on, especially when I'm with a casual environment, but knowing that I'm you know presenting for a webinar and that people actually listening in, um, I tend to remind myself to pronounce clearly. I mean, the words, you know, uh, it is important. Uh, so uh, the words, how I say it, the tone of voice, and of course, to talk slower. Yeah, that's my, that's my weakness. And um, yeah, so that's uh, important in uh, communication because it actually, um, in fact, you know, I, I, I should, uh, it's always said that, you know, if you can use as few words as possible, is even better um, because if you can convey your message in as few words as possible, it's even better because then the people will get it faster and if you can convey that message faster. But even though it's less words, you have to make sure the message is clear. So these are some of the things. And, and because there's so much distractions today, I, I tend to agree with that because um, keep it as brief as possible to deliver the message. Um, and then you know the message will be received even fast in a faster time frame and uh, quicker. Yeah, like I say, you know, I, I think there's just so many distractions today that you know we tend to uh, rattle on and all. It, it doesn't really help to deliver the message. So yeah. So the other aspect I wanted to talk about, which is an important communication skill, is to be empathetic. So to understand or put yourself in the audience uh, position or the listener's uh, position. So in today's case, right, I wanted to, uh, because you're all university students and I didn't want it to be a very academic kind of presentation. I want it to be more about uh, experiences that I've had and things that have worked uh, in my, uh, 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 my working life, etc., and things that will work for you and things that you can maybe take away and, and do. That's what I wanted. So that's how uh, being empathetic is. One aspect is understanding your audience and putting yourself in their position and how they feel. That will also help you to craft your messaging better and um, it becomes more relatable to the audience. And, and that's important, you see. And... Um, you have to consciously do this as well, because if not, you tend to like, I want to deliver this message and not understanding where the audience is coming from or what situation uh, is coming from. And in a way, uh, being empathetic is also to me, it also comes, I mean, it kind of also overlaps with being um, respectful of the audience. 
you know, because you know they have a need, they want to listen to a certain uh, messaging, then you respect their needs and then you try and cater your message uh, to them, yeah? And then another area that, uh, another skill that I wanted to talk about was about being friendly and sincere. And I think people are more comfortable if they can tell that you are sincere and uh, friendly. And it's more like approachable and being a bit open-minded, uh, willing to listen uh, kind of image. And you can do that in many ways. Um, one is the way you talk to the person. Um, and when you show that you are friendly or sincere in whatever you're doing, I think people are more willing to accept the message as well. So one of the easiest and way to showcase friendliness is honesty and kindness. And uh, kindness, it could be as simple as, you know, um, when you're having a conversation or communicating something, you know, checking how everybody, checking how everybody is doing things like, you know, uh, how's everybody doing today, you know, with the challenges that we have at hand, you know, working from home has a lot of challenges. I understand it. I get it because I'm doing it as well. You know, um, things like that kind of show your sincerity, especially if you can build that connection with your audience. Um, I think that's important. And when the audience sees that, oh, hey, you know, you're just like one of us. Uh, you get what I'm going through. And that helps to break a lot of uh, barriers in uh, uh, communications as well. Yeah. So I hope I'm not rambling on too much even right now. Anyway, the last one, and I think it's, it's also a very important uh, a skill to have in uh, communication is giving and receiving feedback. I think giving feedback, we tend to be quite uh, good about it. But I think receiving feedback is what I want to talk about. And like I say, you know, sometimes we tend to be a little bit shy and think that, you know, I, I don't really want to get feedback. But let me tell you that the only way to get better is to constantly get feedback. And that's why I think um, even when you go to work and your working environment next time, um, when your bosses or your peers give you feedback, it's because they care and they want you to do better. So we shouldn't take it in the, the negative way uh, and you know, realize that it's actually for our good. That's for starters, as a starting point. Um, but also, you know, I think recognizing that uh, you can get better. You know, I mean, if for those of you who haven't worked, but for, for me, if I look back 10 years from now, I think because of all the feedback I received, that I have gotten better over the years when I've you know, understood where my weaknesses is and actually build on it and get better at it. So that's one. I think even in terms of giving feedback, I mean, like I told you earlier, you know, sometimes uh, when I correct people, uh, when they speak, they don't speak or they use the right language, some people are more willing to accept the feedback and some people are not so, they were like, oh, you know, wow, you know, okay, you think you're so good, you know. It's, it's not about that. It's when you give feedback sometimes, now sometimes, most of the time when you give feedback is you want someone to be better. And I think we have to keep that in mind, you know. It's not necessarily bad that someone corrects you. It's because they want you to be better. And then if we, have, if we keep that in mind, I don't think we will go far wrong. When people give you feedback, you realize that, hey, that's, how, that's where or how I can... Uh, uh, do better yeah okay so i think these are i mean this is not like academically these are the skills uh, that there only are in communication there are many other skills but i think these are the ones that i i think are important and you should keep in mind when you are communicating um, and and that's how you get better at it yeah so so this is a little bit more technical, but um, I think it's quite straightforward. So just now there was the non-verbal cues, there were the three Vs, uh, verbal, vocal, and visual, and now the communication, there's the seven Cs. And, and it's not rocket science, all this, but it's just a matter of us putting it into practice, yeah? So the first C is about being clear. Um, you need to have one topic or one goal. What is the message you, you want to deliver? and make it easy to understand. So it has to be clear. And some, I mean, even in all presentations I say today, you know, uh, when you have a message to deliver, 
there should be no more than three key messages. Because if there's too many, people cannot remember anyway. So you want to leave them with three key messages or three points that you want them to take away from the session. Yeah. And the second one is being considerate, you know. So this is a bit of a knowing your audience, think about their viewpoints. This is in a way being empathetic, you know, considerate of your audience, knowing uh, maybe which channel to use, uh, how to tailor the message to your audience. So that's about being uh, considerate, yeah. And the third one, uh, be concrete. Of course, in anything, if you want people to believe you, you need to have facts and figures. The more facts and figures you have, the more people will believe you. So like, for example, um, when I talk about the non-verbal cues and what is the makeup of that, and, and that was a fact that you realize now that non-verbal cues are more important than the words you choose or even the tone of your voice. So that is a fact. And then a lot of you will go away today, you know, remembering that because it was a real fact and figure that was given to you to support that. Yeah. And then the fourth one is about being correct. Yeah. Um, Accuracy of the message, uh, being concise is the next one, not to use as few words as possible, which I said. And then um, number six is being complete. Ensure all the facts are there so that there won't be any more questions from the audience. And of, obviously the seventh one is about being courteous, uh, polite and positive and respectful and focused. You know, I just uh, had a look at the time and I realized that uh, this is getting a little bit long. So you know what, I'll, I'll, I can finish at the seven C's of communication and I mean, the rest, I just, uh, I have barriers and overcoming, yeah. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll finish with this, okay. So these are some of the communication skills that interviewers are looking for. This is just to share with you. And these are very common questions that, uh, interviewers will ask, I mean, some of you are going to finish university or even if you're going for interviews for scholarships or some, uh, uh, maybe being a president of the society or club, I, I don't know, you know, some of these things. So these are some of the skills that they are looking for, which I've talked about already. So just a quick uh, recap, listening skills, confidence, uh, empathy, friendliness, uh, respect, brevity of the message, and of course, non-verbal uh, communication, yeah. So these are the things that the interviewers are looking for. So it's important for you to keep this in mind when you go for your interviews. And then those obviously some of the uh, questions, the common questions that you will be asked. So it's always good to prepare yourselves for this uh, kind of common questions. Yeah. So um, in summary, I know I've been rambling a little bit <laughs> um, about communications. One, thing I want you to remember is it's it's not a one-off thing. It's a continuous thing. So keep learning, whether it's from yourself or others. When I say yourself, is if you made that mistake, you know about it and you know not to repeat it. And then, of course, keep learning from others. There are amazing speakers you can find online. You know, TEDx has some of the best speakers in town, in the world, you know, presenting there. And, and simple topics, they make it so interesting. So keep learning, you know, and there are lots of materials online. And then the other thing is keep asking. I think it's always good to keep asking for feedback because you don't want to just know, uh, you don't want to just think about or make assumptions about how you're doing. I think it's important to ask for feedback, you know, and, and people who are honest and want you to do better will give you that feedback. And of course, finally, keep at it. Practice makes perfect. That's no easy, sh there's no shortcut to this. You got to keep doing it. Uh, volunteer if you have a chance to present or if you have a group work, you know, they need some presenters or, you know, public speaking opportunities, sharing sessions, you know, keep doing it. And that's the only way, you know, to get better at it. Yeah. And, and it's fun. Communications is fun. There's lots to learn there's, and, and there's lots to do better. At, and there are lots of creative ways to um, do it. So, you know, enjoy the journey, you know, don't, it shouldn't be stressful. It should be a fun process. And um, with that, I think I will end and take questions if there are any, yeah. Alicia, do you want to run the second poll? Um, if there's time, I think there's a little bit, no, we can. Yeah, we can take a few minutes to launch. The poll. Okay, so after all I've said, so what do you think is most important? What's the one communication skill that you think you want to improve on the most? After all I've said, and these are some of the options, yeah. 
Okay, let's take one minute to answer the poll. And while we are answering, please do post your questions that you may have for Alicia, because uh, after this, we will be going to the Q&A session. And for those that will win a special token courtesy of TM. So uh, post your questions, yeah? All right, guys, keep those votes coming in. Um, we'll have another 10 more seconds. All right, let's see the result. Kane, confidence number one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think confidence is, I guess, like, ultimately, um, before we learn everything else, we need that confidence in ourselves, that self-esteem to keep on doing it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's not going to happen overnight. But you know yeah. what I always tell uh, even my team? That it's okay to be nervous, but you have to be prepared. And that's how you build your confidence. You, you know what I mean? I mean, even I'm nervous doing this talk, you know. Um, but I guess you, you need to know your stuff. Mm -hmm. And besides that, all of us have little strengths, you know. So let's just focus on those strengths, you know, I think to build confidence. But, but it's good to know. So, you know, it's interesting to, to know that that is uh, something that you all think is in, important. And, and that takes time to build over years. It's not going to happen overnight, yeah. So, yeah. Do we want to take questions? Sure, okay. So of you who haven't posted yet, feel free to do so. Okay, so let's take the first question. Uh, we have, all right, you guys have been posting your questions. It's good. Um, we do have some time. Okay, let's take one from, uh, from Shafira. Um, Alicia, this is for you, what should we do or reply if someone asks us a question that we don't know the answer, um, either during a presentation or an interview? Oh, this is like a, like a cover line um, answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think, okay. Um, I think during presentation, if it's a subject meant on a specific subject, if you really don't know the answer, the first thing I would say is don't lie. Because if somebody else in the audience knows the answer, um, then, you know, it, if you're lying and then all your uh, credibility goes out the, the window. So if you really do not know the answer, you can say that you can give your opinion. Well, that's one way. You say that, you know, I don't have the actual facts uh, for the, uh, to, your, to your question. But in my opinion, it is this. Okay, so that way, that means this is what you think about the subject. Yeah. matter. Um, so it's not really, um, I don't know if at interviews, do you really ask something if you don't know? Well, yeah, if they say, so, uh, there's one question that I can think of at interviews, they, you know, that people always say, uh, can you tell me about your weakness? And then I've had uh, people who, I mean, I've asked that question during interviews. I've been asked that question as well. And I, I remember there was one person who says, oh, I don't know. I don't have any weakness or something like that. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, that's an honest answer. But, you know, I think even if you can't think of a weakness at that point, you can say that, you know, uh, I can, well, in my opinion, um, how you should answer that question could be along the lines of that. I may, I don't have a specific weakness that I can think of, but the, I think I can improve on certain areas and what those areas are, you know, maybe things that you think is not your strong point, but you don't think is actual weakness, you can always bring it up. Like, for example, I don't, uh, I don't, I can't think of a specific weakness at this point, but I think I still can improve in terms of my knowledge on certain things, or even I can improve on areas of, uh, voicing out my opinions uh, more strongly, things like that, you know. I, 
I actually, it depends on the question, but one way to get out of it is to say things, give your point of view, in my opinion. If you don't have actual answer to the question, if it's a factual thing that you don't know. Yeah, so I don't know whether that answers your question. But don't lie. If you don't know, just... You know, sometimes it doesn't hurt to tell the truth as well and say that I don't the exact answer, uh, but I can find out or I can get back to you on it uh, at a later time or etc. Yeah. That's my my view. Right. Does that help? I hope that helps. Thanks, Shafira, for your question. Okay, we, uh, let's take another one. This is by Fiza Shuhaimi. Um, are there any tips to make our presentation short and precise, but still get the audience attention? Hmm. Um, okay, just have key messages and get the audience attention. I mean, I think in terms of a presentation, people tend to remember stories. So if you have a story to uh, emphasize your point, that could be one way. Um, if you have a little video, that also helps. But I think just keep to the key messages and to get them to remember or get their attention, maybe run a video, tell a story. You know, I'm not a big uh, uh, fan of uh, uh, telling jokes because I'm not very good at telling jokes. So that's my confession. But if, you know, if it works for you, yeah, you know, tell a joke to emphasize the point or the message you want to uh, deliver. I think that's the way to get them to uh, get their attention and for them to remember it. I think that's more important. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks for your question. Uh, Isa. Okay, we have another one. Uh, probably another, we can take another two more, two more questions. So this is by Mel Nelson. I acknowledge that confidence is part of communication skills, but confidence comes from gesture itself. Is it the same with the non-verbal gesture? Hmm. There are some gestures that actually depict confidence. So for example, your posture and how you stand and when you're talking, I think that's one of the nonverbal uh, uh, non verbal cue that you can give out. But it, I think there are many ways to uh, depict confidence. If, let me see if I answer that question. Gestures, you say. Gestures do depict confidence, but um, it's not the only thing that showcases confidence. Does that answer your question? So gestures like how you answer, uh, how you speak, your tone of voice, um, how you stand, your posture. Um, I think all that are non-verbal cues that also depict confidence. But I think end of the day, it still has to be uh, how confident are you in the message, as in like your conviction when you share the message. I think that actually... Um, showcases uh, more confidence than anything else. Okay. Um, okay, we have, uh, let's take on one more question. Uh, this is by, an, by Anonymous. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on being overly confident? It's something I find very unappealing in some people especially when it appears some people are suggesting opinions as fact. We would like to hear your thoughts on it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I think um, sometimes, I mean, when someone's overconfident, it comes across as arrogance, right? So you, you, there, is a, 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 there is a demarcation between the two. I think we have to know where to draw the line. So I, I agree it can be... Um, uh, unappealing. So, is that I find very unappealing? I, I don't know quite know what, what 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 is the questions. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree that people tend that when you become overly confident, it becomes arrogance. Okay, and when it comes arrogance, it obviously becomes unappealing, unappealing, and you seem to be very into yourself. Yeah. So, but. I think there are ways that you can put forth your opinions or 
share your opinions without being that way. And in, in, in all honesty, right, if you show that you are overconfident, sometimes I think it gives the impression that you're not willing to learn. It's like you know it best, you know. And if you want people to communicate with you and share their thoughts, you should not have, you should not be depicting that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah, I'm not sure if that answers your questions, but I mean, I, I, I don't know what exactly you're hoping to hear from me, but that, I mean, that's what I think, you know, that's why I think, no, because if you are communicating, because you want to get feedback and response, mm. then you should not be arrogant when you share your opinion, you know, you should be sharing your opinion, but willing, still open to listening to others' opinion on that subject. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, because if you if you tend to say that oh my opinion's the best, then you're not willing to listen to other people. Then why are you even communicating or talking about that subject? You know, because you think you know it best. Mm. So. So yeah. I guess like that's a trait that we we should all try to avoid. Yeah, I I mean we 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 should try to avoid it, but I know sometimes when you think you're the subject matter expert, mm. uh, then you tend to have that overconfidence or the arrogance about it and not willing to listen. So it, it can happen, but I think we need to keep ourselves grounded to the simple belief that, you know, everybody has their opinion and there are always many ways to look at something. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good advice, Alicia. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so now I'm not so stressed answering so many questions. Yeah. <laughs> questions are getting so difficult now. <laughs> Okay, so I think... But good we'll... questions, good questions, good questions. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we'll, we'll stop the questions there. Uh, as for the anonymous, uh, please do share your name and your Gmail here at the chat so that we can send the special token. Um, unless you are overseas, then I'm afraid that it will not apply to you. Okay, so let's that's it. Okay. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's wrap it this let's wrap this up. Uh, okay. So thank you everyone, and of course thank you so much, Alicia, for your advice and your sharing. Uh, I hope that everyone here picked up something at least. You know that you are after this that you are able to communicate more uh, more efficiently and more effectively. Yeah. Okay. So um, with that, um, I'd like to again remind. Voted Telecom Malaysia as the graduate's choice. Uh, please do so right now. You can stand a chance to win attractive prizes. Um, the prizes, uh, you know, ranges from an Apple iPhone 12 to a secret uh, secret lab chair. Okay. So for those of you, and all you have to do is just share with your friends and get them to vote, and you get the higher your your referral the higher you stand the chance to win, yeah? So go ahead and scan this QR or you can even uh, visit the website, the link below. And of course, visit TM Virtual Booth at our Talent Bank Digital Career Festival, yeah? Uh, this will be the last week. So uh, if you have not visited yet uh, or have not fully explored all the job uh, career opportunities, yeah, just go for it. Careerfest.com. Okay, so as promised, we have this free personality profile assessment provided by TM. So go ahead. Um, okay, I think if our video is blocking, you can just go ahead and and move the window screen. Yeah, there we go. And just scan the QR. Uh, I will leave it. I will leave the screen on later after the session. Uh, so that uh, you guys can scan. But as we wrap this up, we have the upcoming career webinar, which will be running tomorrow uh, by Omar Abdul Aziz, who is the Head Recruitment and Sourcing Management for TM. And his topic, how to write an outstanding resume. So if you have an uh, any, if you have any, I guess you can say block on your resume, you can attend this session tomorrow. Uh, 
whereby Encik Umar will be sharing his tips on how to write an outstanding resume and also win a special token by asking questions. Yeah. So, yeah, you have a lot of uh, benefits for joining this webinar. <laughs> okay. So with that, I would like to thank you again, everyone. And of course, thank you to Alicia and the TM team for providing this um, special opportunity. And of course, all the special tokens. Uh, go ahead and scan the GCA for TM again, this QR code. And with that, uh, I would like to say thank you and hope that you all stay safe. Yeah. Okay, uh, those who are asking for your attendance, you are already recorded. Uh, as long as you just joined this webinar, we've got your attendance recorded. And as for your early points, uh, please go back and refer to your, to your management, to your university management about it, yeah? Because we will be sending the attendance to them as well. So they will have a record, okay? So with that, thank you everyone. Let me just put this back put the screen back on uh, this slide here for you to scan the, okay, one sec, yeah. Okay, something's going on here, yeah. All right. So thank you everyone, Good. thank you again. <laughs> so many thank yous. <laughs> and I uh, wish you all a great day. Take care, bye-bye. Um, guys, before I forget, Whoever is still here, let's take a, a quick photo session. Anyone who is interested to do a quick photo session, just raise your hand at the participant. Yeah, okay, I'm inviting you, uh, No Afrika. Just raise your hand for a photo session. Yeah, let's have a, everyone, everyone join in. Let's do it. Uh, once you are in, just on your video. Uh, don't worry about the, uh, the, person, the PPA because I will be sharing the screen uh, after this year. Hi, Rudolf. Looking good. No, Afika, how are you? I'm fine. Great, fantastic. <laughs> okay, anybody else joining us? All right. Kalik, I see you. Mm. Okay, just raise your hand if you'd like to join us for a group photo session. Okay, Chiyong, Izni. All right. Okay, can we get everyone from TM as well? Alicia, you here?
Okay, everyone's here. Uh, Shikin, I think we can't see your screen. Okay. All right. Okay, I see Alicia has already left the, the, the room. It's okay, let's do it. Okay, everyone, get ready. Three, two, one. Awesome, sweet. Okay, thank you, everyone. Goodbye.